All right, I guess everyone's here. Uh, I'll just introduce myself because uh, it's good to introduce the MC who's going to be blabbering a bit before the actual talk starts. Have you guys uh, had lunch? Okay, that's not loud enough. Have you guys had lunch? Okay, no? I literally see a nodding, no? <laughs> well, you've got to go have lunch after this, okay? <laughs> okay, uh, so yeah. Uh, first of all, a huge round of applause for yourself for making it through all the talks and everything because you've obviously sat through all the talks and you've obviously enjoyed them. So please, give yourself a huge round of applause. <laughs> yeah, that was just a test to see how energetic <clears throat> you are. So can we have a huge round of applause for yourself? <laughs> Okay, I'll take that one. That's uh, 10 decibel more than what I heard earlier. Okay, cool. So my name is Ashutosh. I'll be the MC for today. And uh, the speaker, I can we put up the slide for the speaker, of course. Yeah. So uh, our next speaker, as you see on the screen, <coughs> Benjamin. Uh, Benjamin has been, uh, you know, doing WordPress website since uh, 2010. Uh, that is literally six years after WordPress came into existence. So trust me, this guy has seen all the WordPress versions, mostly all the WordPress versions. Uh, at the moment, he's working with Gambit Technologies and the, the, the people behind Stackable, a uh, WordPress uh, you know, builder, that uh, WordPress you know, block builder that is being used by so many people. And Benjamin himself has launched many plugins which have been used across the globe by uh, 150,000 people, like more than 150,000 people they are being used out there. So among your applause, I'd like to welcome Benjamin on stage. So please give your hands for Benjamin who will be talking about this talk. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, so welcome to my talk. It's how to achieve an efficient workflow with the site editor and the block editor. So uh, as he said a while ago, I am Benjamin Antal. So I'm the founder and the developer of Stackable and uh, WP Interactions, which is a new plugin that we're coming out with. I've been developing with WordPress since 2010. So, and if you have any socials, so you can find me at BF Intel and almost everywhere. So our agenda for today is, first I'll talk about who is this for, uh, why do we even uh, need this kind of talk, and how do we actually achieve an efficient workflow with the site editor and the block editor, and how about uh, what if we're dealing with multiple websites. So who is this talk for? So we're definitely not going to talk about database stuff. There's no performance optimizations now, no coding standards. Uh, it's not about how to manage multiple websites or the best cowboy coding tactics. Although if, if you're doing this, just make sure you have FTP access. And then, so show of hands, who here has built a complete website with just the site editor? Okay, just a few. So hopefully after this, you, pick, you might want to try using the site editor. So this talk is for people who are using or you want to use the site editor and the block editor, and you want to get good at it. And it's for people who are already designing entire websites, and it can be also a primer if you want to get started with it. So my goal with this talk is for you to at least say once, aha, I didn't know that you could do that. So this talk is just actually quite simple. I'm here to give you some actionable tips, that you can use in your day-to-day -day life when using the block editor and site editor. So when I was thinking about the topic that, uh, to share with you here in WordCamp Asia, I was sure it was going to be about the block editor and the site editor. Because in my day-to-day -day life, with being the uh, head of the dev team in Stackable, which is a block plugin, and WP Interactions, which is also a block plugin, if you look at my screen, it's always going to be either the login screen of WordPress because it logged me out, or it would be the block editor because I'll be just there fixing bugs with our blocks, uh, creating new features, creating new blocks, and tinkering around and exploring what are the new things. So over the past couple of years, I've learned a thing or two about how to be efficient when dealing with blocks. So we've be I've been doing this since the beta of Gutenberg back in 2018. So I thought I could com compile everything that I have learned and share with you. So I think we need a talk about efficiency in the block editor because these two have changed the way how we do things. I won't go into the entire history, 
But for so long, we've been doing the same things um, over and over again using the same type of tools. But now, things are changing and they keep on changing. So the block editor and site editor have been here for quite a while, but they're still constantly changing and they're constantly being improved, all thanks to the help of the contributors, which are, who are all doing a phenomenal job. Things that are hard to do before are starting to become easier. And, but if you just look at it from the surface, the block editor still looks the same as before, but a lot has changed under the hood. So how does it, what does it mean if uh, we want to achieve an efficient workflow? So it's definitely not just about speed. It is about speed, but not just. Because if it's all about speed, then what you can do is just use one of those new lightweight mouse that are hollow, and then just practice clicking and increase your average clicks per minute. But it's also about making things less of a hassle, achieving things with less clicks, and uh, to have a more enjoyable editing experience. It's definitely not about memorizing a bunch of shortcuts because that's a bit boring. And honestly, I find it a bit hard to memorize a lot of shortcuts, especially if you're not using them all the time. For me, an efficient workflow is a smart way of doing things. So imagine the time before when we didn't have the block editor yet or the site editor. What does it mean to be efficient? So we have our header and footer and template editors, block, uh, I mean, Page builders and template editors handled this very well. They helped us achieve efficiency. And then to make building pages quicker, we use templates. So you can uh, use those as an easy starting point to build our About Us pages, Contact Us pages. And then if you needed a good theme that had loads of good settings in the theme customizer. And then you have your trusty short codes. So we basically had to work around the, uh, the classic editor because we essentially needed to lay out everything inside the text editor. So we had to use short codes. So if someone's watching this from the future, if you don't know what short codes are, they are kind of like HTML, but you use square brackets. So it's simple, but the more arguments you have, it gets more complex. So page builders also gave us a good uh, rescue over, over there by giving us uh, new UIs so we can create them easily. And you have code snippets because WordPress is so customizable, so pluggable, and sometimes we just need to add some tiny changes to suit our needs, like disable the admin bar or disable search, so, or add the PayPal button. So personally, what I did before was I created a custom plugin that contains nothing and then every time I need a custom snippet, I'll just plop it in there, cowboy coding style. But I made sure I had FTP access. And then lastly, custom fields. These are just powerful efficiency tools, which are data, and then are optionally tied up to a post. So these are, this made things very easy when we're creating templates. So this is the classic way of being efficient. Now, if we're doing the block way, these are the counterparts. So for the header, footer, and template builder, you have your site editor. And then for templates, you have your patterns. The customizer is now the block team settings. Short codes are now blocks, and the two are still the same. So I made it the four points here color blue because that means that these are the only things that changed. So if you were efficient before and you're hesitant to change to blocks, and now you're using blocks, you just have to be efficient in the, these four areas, and you'll be as efficient or even more efficient than before. So how do we do this? Let's move on to some actionable things. How do we become efficient with the site editor? You can think of the site editor as, as like the foundation of a construction site. I don't know anything about construction, but I saw this picture and I wanted to use it. So, but in my imagination, if you prep it right, then it would do wonders. So the, ed the site editor replaces our header, footer, and template builder, and our theme customizer, so it's a biggie. My first step would be to use the default 2024 theme. So using this gives us three things. Since it is a block theme, it unlocks the site editor. 
Number two, it's specifically made to leverage all of the cool new editor features we have in WordPress uh, now and what's coming in the future. And number three, the default theme is a chameleon, hence the picture. You can change it in so many ways and you can use it and you can change it into virtually any type of website. If you take a look at all our past default themes, the earlier ones are definitely made to be uh, for blogging sites. And then you have 2014, which kind of looks like a magazine site. And then afterwards, slowly, slowly we're, it's like we're transforming into a cleaner and more modern minimalist look. And those can work as a foundation for, let's say, a client site. Although, you really had to use plugins and add some custom CSS code in there so that you can change things. Because if not, they will still look like the default theme. So you'll still have a semblance that you're, someone's using a default theme in a client site. But for me, 2024, is it's like it was meant to be a starting point or a foundation for a new site. So here's the site editor for the default theme. By the way, the screen captures are from a better version of WordPress 6.5. I placed a QR code over there. If you scan it, uh, it opens a WordPress playground for 6.5 beta. So what's happening in the screen right now is we're scrolling through the different styles that are available in 2024. So this is just the default theme. And you'll notice that the, the colors are changing but no, not only those, even the, the font and the button size and the button border radius are all changing. So it's not just colors. And these are the only preset styles, but you can use them as the starting point uh, and customize them. So let's say I pick the black style. And then when you click on the pencil icon, you can further customize things in the style panel. You can change your text font, text colors, button colors. Now these changes aren't just local in this site, in this um, screen, but it's available across your entire site. So these global changes are what's essential to making your workflow efficient. So whenever now you add a new heading block or a new button block, then they would also get all of these changes. So my next tip is you can adjust the appearance of all your blocks. So if you click on the blocks area, you'll see all of your native blocks. And you can select one or you can from the side, or you can select one in the middle in the editor. And let's say I want to edit all of my buttons. I just click on it, and all of the button settings appear. And I can change any aspect of my button block. And you can even go further and change or add some custom CSS specific only for buttons. So right now, I am editing uh, the paddings, the sizes, but I can also add a box shadow. I don't know if this looks good, but I added the box shadow that's white so that it's visible. So now the button has a white box shadow. And after a quick save, then all the blocks would have these adjusted styles. And then the best part of this is if I'm adding a new button block, it would also have the styles. And when I add a new pattern, and then that pattern also uses the block, uh, the button block, then that would also have the styles. So this one, I'm going to choose that one. There. So it's everything's global. Next, let's jump back to colors. So we've picked a dark color style. And then by picking that, it changed our entire color palette. Now, this color palette isn't only something that's used to pick colors. It's also, it also has a global trick up its sleeve. So these colors correspond to something in the site. And these are all global as well. If you change something, then the rest would also follow suit. So let's say I'll change this base color here. Now, if you change the color for this slot, you're not only just changing the slot, but you're also changing everything that uses the color. So this is another way to style things globally. 
Alternatively, instead of changing your existing palette, you can add a custom color. So this custom color isn't also just a slot. It also has some global powers. So when you use that color in your blocks, let's say this heading block and that button block, then those colors would also have the global effects. So you can change the color afterwards if you need some tweaking, and then everything would also follow. There, I'm changing it to, I think, green and then blue, and then they all also change. Now let's move on to templates. With the site editor, you'll, you have the control over all your templates, your headers, footers, blog page, 404 page, archive pages, template, page templates. You have full control over all of them. Now this for me is a game changer because before you had to use plugins or a specialized theme to have free reign over all of these. Now your site editor is your built-in template editor. Now let's look at something you normally would do. You change your default 404 page. With the site editor, you just click on it, and then change the, let's say I'm changing the text, and then you just save it, and then now your 404 page will be this one. Traditionally, if you wanted to do this without any plugins, oh, I mean without the builder, you'd need to create a page and then find a plugin that, you, that allows you to assign that page to be your 404 page. So my next tip is about page templates. So it's easy, way easier to create them now. So let's say you want to create a landing page. And sometimes when you create landing pages, you want it isolated from the rest of your site. You don't want your headers, your title in there. You just want the content and just full reign over the content. So you can use page templates for that. But what if, like this one, I don't have an existing page template. Here, the header is still there. I want it gone. So what I can do is just I can create one, just give it a name, and then now I'm actually editing it right now without even leaving the page. So I just remove all the stuff that I don't need and then save it. And now I have my blank page template uh, without uh, using any other plugin. There. So no headers and no footers anymore. So templates are really great and they're really comprehensive. If you're creating your templates, it can even pick up any custom post types you have or any custom ta taxonomies. You can even have different templates per post category. So I was just giving tips, but if you think about it, if you bring it back to the title, it also works as a workflow. So you have step one, you can customize the look of your entire site using the site editor. Then you jump on step two, customize all the blocks so that they look all coherent. Step three, customize your global palette because this will really help if you need to tweak something further on. And number four, customize all your templates. And now, after all of these steps, when you create a new page, it will all fit in. And the best part is we're just doing things without any plugins and all natively. So some just minor tips that you might find interesting. So you can set your block spacing to zero if you want full control over uh, the spacing. Because the, your theme is a bit opinionated as it should be because it wants you to help you. So if, but if you want pixel perfect designs, you can just set the spacing to zero so that everything would be side by side. And this also solves some issues. If you can't find the setting and then there's a space somewhere, this can solve it. Next, you can still have your site-wide CSS or additional CSS. This was available in the customizer before, and it's still there. It's just sometimes hard to see. And lastly, you can bring up the command palette from the site editor by hitting Command K or Control K. This is very helpful for navigating around if you're not yet familiar with uh, the editor. And you can even type in your title of a post, and you can start editing it right away. So now that we have a, a strong foundation of the site editor, let's jump on to the block editor. Or rather, how about editing uh, your posts? So let's say we want to recreate this very typical three-column layout on the top right. 
And we are going to do things the inefficient way, or rather, if you don't know yet how to do things efficiently. I clocked myself. Now, this is not a real benchmark, but uh, a strict benchmark, but I clocked myself doing this at 1 minute and 8 seconds. It's a lot of clicking everywhere, looking for the block. Um, but I'm not going to finish this because I might run out of time. But trust me, it's 1 minute and 8 seconds. So it's a lot of typing and then doing things all over again. So one thing you can improve on this is by using slash to insert your blocks. I'm sure a lot of people know this, but you can use slash and then type in your block and then hit enter to quickly add it. You can also use uh, markdown shortcuts, your hash or your, you, you can type hash and then space to turn it into a heading or a dash and space to make it into bullets. You can do that. Next, the block toolbar also contains a few more helpful features aside from just formatting text. My favorite so far is the leftmost button. So it's the parent selector button. If you have a lot of nested blocks, you can use it to quickly traverse up the chain. So you can use it if you have a lot of nested blocks and you want to edit something in the parent quickly. And then next is the next button you can use to edit the style, change the style, or transform your block into another one. And the last three dots button, that's where the add before and add after buttons are to quickly add blocks. Now this one for me is a very simple but really a very helpful and time saver tip. Normally you use the inserter button to add blocks, but if you have something, uh, a block selected, you can just hit enter or return and you can quickly add a block afterwards. So you, you can do this, I think with almost any block. And then if you need to memorize at least two shortcuts, my recommendations are just delete and duplicate. Because if you use your normal backspace or your normal delete key, it's contextual. So it will delete wherever your cursor is, so you can delete uh, text. But for this one, you're, it's a surefire way to delete uh, entire blocks or duplicate entire sections. And of course, you can always use your command C and command V. So my last tip for the block editor is use the list view. It's accessible in the top left, and it's, it eases your mind because you can, see everything, um, you can see everything very easily how it's built. So it's very helpful, let's say you use a pattern, and then you didn't make the pattern, and then just open it, and now you can see how you can better adjust things. So now with those efficiencies, let's see how we can uh, do things now with, uh, by now, instead of clicking the inserters, we now use slash, and we now use the toolbar to select the parent, and I'm pressing enter now to insert new text, and now we can cut our time for, from 1 minute 8 seconds to just 36 seconds. So that's huge savings, if you're, especially if you're creating a lot of websites. So patterns. So at its base, Oops. At its base, patterns are just prefabricated groups of blocks. So there are two types of patterns. Your regular patterns, like you can see here. So you can just use them to, as your starting point for your sites. So it's just like your typical template. So you use them, and then you edit them, and that's it. But you have your second type of patterns, which are sync patterns. Uh, they're called, they were called reusable blocks, but they're still the same. So it's just you have one block, you have one reusable pattern, and it's synced across your entire site. If you edit one, then everyone, everyone will follow suit. But now, starting WordPress 6.5, you also have instance overrides. So instance overrides is a game changer for this because it allows you, instead of having just sync patterns, it now turns them into small templates. So let's see that in action. For here, I have only your regular sync patterns. So in my screen, it's, it's just a pattern. Two patterns are, are reused, but it's the same one. And if you click on it, all you can do is just edit it. And if you edit it, because you want to change something, let's say that picture, if you change it and save it, then all the rest of the patterns that you used would still be the same, uh, would also reflect those change. 
there. So if I scroll down, it's the same picture now. With instance override, you can edit the pattern and set something to be overridable, if that's the word. <laughs> then you just check on this, and now you're setting it that every time you use a pattern, you can now have it to be a different type of content. So you can do it in multi with multiple blocks in with the same pattern. And now, if I click on that pattern, I now have two new content areas, and I can edit the image. And if I edit the image, you'll see that I edited it, but if I scroll down, the other sync pattern that I have still has the old one. So now it's really like small, small templates that you can reuse anywhere. So we also have a pattern directory. Um, and when you access it, there will just be uh, a copy button beside every pattern. You can copy it and then go inside your editor and then paste it. It's also a very easy way for anyone to contribute because there's a block editor available right there. If you just create a pattern, just give it a name, and then submit, and then you've already contributed to the project. So blocks. Blocks are the fundamental parts of the block editor. It's the name. So how, do we, how can we be efficient with them? For me, I don't think that uh, you need to create your own blocks. Especially if the reason for creating your own block is something uh, about layouts. So I created a short algorithm here on whether you should or should not create a new block. So if you are creating a section, then maybe just use a sync pattern. If you're missing a an option in a native block, then maybe try a third-party block or a block library, like Stackable. <laughs> And then, if you need something special, a special script or some special markdown, then you can just use the custom HTML block, especially if this is just one off. Now, if you need some special functionality, maybe try doing all those three. And then, if all else fails, then create your new block. So, why? Because Gutenberg development is rapid, so a lot of things change all the time. So, when a lot of things change, a lot of things get, can get broken also if you have custom code in there. So it's another thing that you have to maintain. And every time you need to maintain something, your efficiency goes down. And there are a lot of good alternatives out there. So how about when dealing with multiple sites? Now you have one site, it's good to go, it's ready, and now you want to create another site. How do you deal with that? So first, you can export your patterns. If you export your patterns, you'll get uh, JSON files, and then you can build your own collection of patterns. And then every time you need them, you can just export them, or rather import them into your new site, and the patterns will become available. But the better thing for me is you can export all your changes as a new block theme. Forgot to hit play. Okay, so th this whole talk, we've been changing this uh, theme over here. We have changed the colors and we customized the color palette and blocks and changed the 404 page and added a uh, page temp blank page template. You can export all of those by heading over to the site editor and just clicking the export button. And you will just end up with the zip file. There, go. this is the export button. If you click on it, you'll get the zip file. Now the zip file, if you just open it, you'll notice it's just your regular block theme. You have, it has all the innards of a block theme. You have your theme.json file, template files, and more. So what can you do with it? You can import it or activate it in another website. So I have here a blank site. It's, it just looks like the earlier one we had, but it's blank. So it just has the default theme, but nothing in it. No settings, nothing yet. So what I can do here is I can activate the theme or upload and activate the theme that we had that we just downloaded. So there I'm going to up upload it and after I upload it if you check in the front end all our previous settings are now there. So you can see that it's now activated because it says here 
2024 slash my starters team. So I renamed the exported file. So when you check in the front end, now all of the settings are there. All of our 404 pages and everything, it's all there. So for multiple websites, what you can do is you can use the default 2024 theme because you're now experts with the site editor. Or you can just use the exported block theme that you just exported a while ago. And lastly, a bonus tip, that exported zip file, you can actually submit it to the theme directory and contribute. You just have to change the picture, change the name, change some other things, and submit it. So this is also another way to contribute to the project. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, uh, like after a wonderful event um, and this great talk, I'd love to know if you guys have any questions for Benjamin. And that will be great if you guys do have questions. So any questions? Because no if you don't, I'll ask my questions. I love talking. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. Please <laughs> do that. Very interesting talk, thanks. Um, I'm quite impressed how far um, this block uh, theme has come. I'm, I'm not used to it. Um, I'm using Divi. Do you still see some cases where um, page builders like Divi or Elementor make more sense? Um, I think it's, it depends on the use case. Um, I'm sure not everyone would be, uh, it, it's, since it's an open source project, we have always alternatives. So to each his own. So if you're com more comfortable with using that, then it's, it's totally okay. But I'm sure you can use also, uh, sometimes there, there's going to be some um, interconnectivity with the new stuff in the site editor. Maybe there will be some um, ways they can interconnect with each other, then uh, that would also help. But I don't, I don't see that um, page builders and other solutions, I don't think that they will go away anytime soon. Because um, the more tools we have, and then that's just better for everyone. Thanks. Any other questions, guys? <clears throat> Please, yeah. Hello, and thank you for the presentation. Uh, I use a lot of the site editor. Um, I want to know that um, the template log function, and there is a template log called content only. And uh, I use it a lot, but it is really limited. And I saw the um, pattern that can, um, I forgot, the allow to change something. Yeah, the and it, instance override. Yeah, uh, override, yeah. And it seems like it's really like the content only template log. And uh, I want to ask, can that function replace the content only template log that um, have more flexibility to let um, user to change anything else using the pattern? Uh, I think it can, because the template log, I think it's mostly used for so that you, you don't change something in the certain group of blocks. But this is more for um, reusability. So it's, it's like that one, it's ensuring that you don't touch something. And then in this one, it's more of, you can use it to build like small templates. So it's a different use case, uh, a different intention, but I think it can also work. You can also use that for that. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Okay, great. Uh, so I'll just ask, uh, oh, sorry, please, go ahead. Mine is a really non-technical question, so all yeah. yours. Uh, not so much a question, but unfortunately the pattern overrides has been punted to 6.6. .6. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there were a few um, issues and ongoing discussions about the best way to implement it, which were, it's made it too tight to get into 6.5. It will continue in the Gutenberg plugin Oh, that's but too it bad. just won't be thank available in the 6.5 release. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. So I didn't know that because I was, uh, yeah, busy. <laughs> um, firstly, thanks for the presentation. I wanted to know, are there any inefficiencies that you could point out? 
Um, not. No, I, no, not really for me. I can I can get back to you at that, but uh, for now, um, well, th it's not that there are inefficiencies for me, but there's just a lot of room for improvement that we're we're doing right now. So and and then eventually we'll we'll have more and more uh, solutions for efficiency. Maybe I should have rephrased that. But are there any features? that are stopping you being as efficient as you would like to be or, or uh, anything on a wish list? Oh, in my wish list? Yeah. Well, the, the feature that got punted, right. <laughs> that's a huge thing. You can talk to him then. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else who'd like to ask a question or has certain suggestions? I'll just rephrase it. Great. So, uh, Benjamin, uh, you've been working a long time with WordPress. I mean, d what was the earliest version that you saw that you know you worked on? I think I worked on WordPress 3.1. Oh wow, that's <laughs> quite back, way back. So, so yeah. w what was it like? I, I started off really late. So, could you just tell us what was it like? And well, not the, you know, the <laughs> negative part, but yeah, of course, you know. Well, it, it's it. Pretty much stayed the same un until WordPress 5 came out, and then the block editor was introduced. Uh, back then, the, the really new thing was that you can now um, reorder things, and you have a, you had a new UI when you were creating your menu. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sure you did work before WordPress as well on websites, right? Yeah. So, so what mesmerized you with the WordPress uh, backend that you know uh, you're like, okay, fine, this is my love now. Uh, so I used to do other CMSs before, but when I discovered WordPress, uh, it 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 had good documentation, uh, and then it also had a good community. So these WordCamps, actually, so it was like, what? There's a convention for software. So th that one really um, resonated with us. And what was your first WordCamp that you ever attended? In what year and what was the word count? Uh, there was a meetup uh, in the Philippines uh, back in 2014. And then that's my uh, first meetup. So I met a lot of good people there. And then you didn't, didn't stop, right? Well, I stopped during the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you didn't stop working, yeah. of course. But yeah, you yep. did stop the... But we, I, we start, I started, along with my team, uh, really going into word camps uh, and contributing and then speaking uh, just last year. Got it. So WordPress for the win, guys. So that's what it is. So huge round of applause for our speaker. And we have a token of appreciation for you for being uh, such a wonderful speak out. Hey, thank you. <laughs> hey, let me take a photo last time. Okay. Hold this up. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, just a couple of announcements. Uh, 3.30, you all know that uh, there's going to be a session with uh, Ask Me Anything uh, with Mac, of course, and you're going to be there, of course, and there's no saying about that. But after that, we've got the raffle session. So all of you who are, like, got their fingers crossed, this one's for you. I mean, I got my fingers crossed all along, but still waiting for the iPads and the D DJI drone and everything to be won. I don't know how many I entered. And after that, of course, how many of you like to party? Of course, there's an after party. So we'll see you guys there. And that's about it for this uh, track. And thank you so much for coming. Thanks a lot. <laughs>